Huh. Hey, whoa. Hey, I was doing maintenance on my water heater. What are you doing? All right, so in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you what kind of maintenance you need to do on a water heater. Now, a lot of the stuff you could do on your normal water heater, and actually anybody can do this, um, but a hybrid water heater needs a little more attention. It's actually not a lot. Um, if you could do the maintenance on a normal water heater, you can do it on a hybrid water heater. No big deal. Okay, so what I was doing here was a visual inspection. I was making sure that nothing was bulging. I went around the whole unit, making sure there's no leakage. This is actually where the heating elements are. You wanna make sure this isn't leaking. Uh, you wanna make sure all your plumbing lines, nothing is leaking there. You're gonna check, check everything. Just look around, make sure nothing looks out of whack, okay? Um, if everything looks good, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna shut the unit down. And this is the same step for really any unit. All right, so we're gonna go over to the electrical box and we're gonna hit the breaker and turn this one off. Hot water heater, off. All right, so now that the unit is off, um, we're gonna do a couple things. We're going to, um, first, we're gonna check the filter. So this is a heat pump. Uh, hybrid water heater and it has this air filter up here okay so what this is doing is actually cleaning the air and you can see mine is almost one year old I've only cleaned it once you should do this about every six months um, and it's actually pretty clean all right uh, what it does is actually sucks air up here and blows out up here so what you want to do is you want to take this outside and right, you want to so blow it with gonna, the, uh, clean it with just a little bit of water all right, no big deal. You can do this outside with a hose. I'm just gonna do it inside in the sink. All right, so we're gonna wash this down until all that, you can actually see it here. You can see that's that's dirty, that's clean. We're gonna wash this until it's completely clean. Okay, now what we wanna do is we wanna dry it. So you can just kind of go like this. I would recommend doing it outside really hard. Um, after you do that, you can basically just put a towel on it and just push on it very gently. Just blot it, okay? And you don't want to rub it. You don't want to rub it. You just want to just want to dry it. And that looks pretty good. All right? So we're going to put this back in the unit and that step will be done. Okay, so now we're going to reinsert the filter. We're going to clean this before. We always want to wipe everything down, keep everything clean. And we want to put the words towards us. All right? Air filter, done. We can mark that step complete. So we did our visual inspection, we did our filter. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to the air relief valve. Now this is a very important valve. What this does is this makes sure that this doesn't turn into a missile and blow up. Um, if anything was a malfunction in here, like the heating elements, and it was to heat the water too much and start boiling it because the thermostat went bad, that's what this is for. This actually relieves the valve, the, the, the pressure in the tank and, 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 and keeps this from becoming a bomb, okay? So this is actually insanely important. So what you wanna do uh, once a year is you come down here and you want this, obviously this is burning hot water coming out of here. You wanna make sure it's going somewhere where it's gonna drain. Mine's going into my condensate pump, so I'm okay. So we just wanna, we just wanna run this a few times. We don't want to overflow it like I just did, but that's pretty good. We just want to make sure that when it runs, it still goes, it still locks back and it's good. So you're just basically trying to run a little bit of water through there, okay? And that's good. The pump is now pumping the water out. I may do that a few more times just to get a little bit of water. You can't do it really too much. You may want to get like a gallon through it, but uh, that's probably all you need to do. Maybe I'll do a little bit more. Step is done. Okay, so for this step, you need bleach, all right? So these hybrid water heaters, heat pumps, they create a lot of condensate uh, by taking the humidity out of the air and it dumps it into this condensate line and then the pump pumps it away, right? So there's a drain line here. So what you wanna do is you wanna open this up and we wanna, of course, we wanna look inside there. We wanna make sure there's nothing, um, you know, nothing blocking it. Always give it a visual inspection this pipe is very inconvenient uh well, it looks pretty good what we're going to do is we're going to pour about a cup of bleach down 
in here. And what that's going to do is anything that's any kind of sediment or any kind of buildup, that'll kind of just eat it away. Again, once a year, this is not a big deal. And it says a cup, about a cup, and eh, whatever. And we're just going to pour it in there. Pour the bleach in here and let that kind of just sit in there overnight and it'll kind of eat away and then eventually it'll just wash, its, wash itself through the system. All right, so we'll put the cap back on there. That step is done. All right, so now we're gonna move on to my least favorite step. We're actually gonna drain a little bit of water out of this tank. And the reason why we're gonna do that is we're gonna make sure that no sediment gets stuck at the bottom of this tank. Okay, so your, your water comes into your house and you know you would like to think that it's clean and it doesn't have any purities, but it, it does. It has little tiny minerals and things like that. And that stuff likes to deposit at the bottom of this huge tank. Okay, so to stop that from happening, you need to drain some water out of here at least once a year. Okay, so this is the drain down here. All right, we're gonna hook a garden hose up to that. And then we're gonna run it to my sub pump. Okay, now if you don't have a sub pump, you may need to get like a transfer pump um, or run it into a sink or something like that. Um, it really depends. Everyone's situation might be a little bit different. If you're, if you're, if your hot water heater is in your basement like mine is, I'm going to run mine into my sub pump. Um, if it's in your garage, you just run it out, run a hose out to your to the, your uh, driveway. Okay. But um, to do that, the first thing we do is we turn off the cold water supply to the tank. We actually, the step before that is we made sure we turned off the power to the unit. This is very important. You don't want the power on when you kill the power, um, when you kill the water supply to the tank. All right. So... We're going to turn off the water, cold water supply. And we're going to go upstairs and I'm going to open up a hot water uh, valve. Any of them in the house, two, three, it doesn't matter. Hot. The cold hot is now not working and that's what you want. Okay, so we want to turn off, want to drain that hot water line. Right, now we're going to take a, a garden hose this is a standard garden hose, nothing special. So go outside, grab a garden hose, and we're just gonna hook it up to here. It's the same exact threads, everything's the same. Then we take the other side and we run this to where we want it to drain. So outside, in your sub pump, whatever. Mine's gonna be in my sub pump. Sorry, it's a little dark over here. And we're gonna put it in here. Now, what you'll notice here too, I have a lot of sensors around my sub pump. Uh, very, very smart. Um, if you don't have that in your house, you probably should think about doing that. But that's not, a, we're not doing a video on basements. Then what we're gonna do is, depending on your unit, uh, it usually just has a knob. This one doesn't. You actually have to use a screwdriver, so no big deal. We're just gonna put a screwdriver and we're gonna start letting the water out. And you should see water coming out. There it comes. So now we're going to drain this into here. Um, one thing that I would do that I forgot to do, honestly, is I would get a cheesecloth or some kind of filter. And if you're draining it into a sub pump like I am, maybe put that on the edge of the hose. And what that'll do is that'll catch any sediment and keep it out of your sub pump. Um, you know, I should probably really have done that, but, but I didn't. Um, Okay, so now while this is draining, um, you want to let air in. So you can actually use this air relief valve here. And I don't know if you can hear that, but when you pull that, that actually is letting air back into the tank, air behind water, and allowing this to flow. The flow, I'm sure, picked up on the other end a lot when I'm doing this. But we're just going to let this go. We're probably going to drain about half the water out of the tank. Um, and then I'll, what I usually do is I'll close this off turn the cold water on and kind of let it splash in there. And the idea is that it'll maybe it'll move some of that sediment around, turn the cold water back off and then uh, reopen the valve and drain out maybe another couple of gallons to get rid of that, any of that sediment. Okay. Um, and that's it for the part of draining the tank. And this, the draining part, it can be done on any water heater. This is actually um, not really hybrid water heater specific. Um, but that's all we got on the drain. All right, so now we're gonna turn the power back onto this unit. But before we do that, we need to make sure this tank is fully 
filled with water. Um, the reason being there's, there's units in here, um, heating units, and they can burn out. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're going to turn the water, cold water supply on to the tank. So we let the tank fill up with water um, and now we need to get rid of all the air. Okay, so we're gonna come to a hot, hot water supply. We're gonna turn it on. We're gonna, we're gonna let all the air out. That's what we're cleaning out of our pipes. Okay, so we want to run this until we get no more air. We want to test it a few times, go back and forth. We want to really make sure that tank is full of water. I would recommend going to all your hot water fixtures all around the house and turning them all on and making sure you're not getting air and make sure you're actually getting water coming out, out of them. That tells you that the entire uh, plumbing system is full of water and now it's safe to turn a water heater on. Okay. We have two more steps left, okay? Um, the next step I have on here is if you made it this far in the video, I'm gonna ask you to, to do something. Since you made it this far, you obviously like the video and you're learning something. So I'm gonna ask you to subscribe. Also, please like the video and please leave me a comment. That really helps me um, you know, in the whole YouTube algorithm. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, the last step, and there's gonna be one bonus step at the end we're still gonna do, but I'm gonna show you really the last step of what you would have to do in this. Is we're gonna turn the unit back on. So, let's go to the circuit breaker. Back on. Wax on, wax off. Connected to the internet, it says the Wi-Fi is connected to the, uh, the internet. Everything looks happy, it's 132 degrees. That is all the maintenance steps that you need to do. So let's recap what we did. We actually didn't, it wasn't really that much work. I mean, to do this, it took me what? Are we down here for 20 minutes and that's with videoing, that's with taping. Um, so, Let's recap. So we did a visual inspection, made sure there was nothing wrong with it. We checked the pressure relief valve. We cleaned the condensate line. We inspected the condensate line. I didn't show you that, but I just made sure that the condensate line, wherever it was drained to, was going to a good spot and there was no leaks anywhere. Um, we checked all of our fixtures. We then, the last thing we did, um, oh no, we actually, we cleaned the filter. And we, um, we drained the tank. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is, what I like to do is, I'm gonna leave a paper here. And I do this with all of my appliances, my cars and everything. I write, I just write down what I did. So I'm gonna write down, this is all the steps that I did. And I'm gonna say, done uh, September of 2021. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 2021, okay. And that tells me that that's when it was done. And I'm gonna leave a piece of paper like right up here, no big deal, all right? So that's the end of the video. I hope you learned something. I hope that you'd go and you do the maintenance on your water heater. Um, all these steps you could do on a normal uh, electric water heater, uh, except for you know the condensate line and the uh, filter up here, but all the other steps are applicable. So really there's only two steps that are unique to a hybrid water heater. Hybrid water heater is really not that, uh, that much more maintenance. Um, this one's about a year, a little bit over a year. I've had no issues with it. I have a lot of videos on this specific unit, how much money it saved me. Um, I've done a lot of experiment with it. So if you wanna see those videos, I'll link them up here in some cards. Uh, but please, please subscribe to the, to the channel. I appreciate you watching. Thank you.